Hello, I'm Peter Scallon. I'm the captain of the sail training catch, Brian Baru. And I'm John McNally. I'm mentor with Sail Training Ireland. So together, we're on the Brian Baru, but of course we're in Portavogie. So this boat will be better known as B151 Investor M, uh, which arrived here 62 years ago and was owned by the Warnock family for many years. And the boat then went into, uh, went down south fishing prawns under the Wexford Registry, WD232, and her name was shortened to Investor. And then she went into fairly disgraceful retirement and was discovered by Tony McLaughlin, uh, the late shipwright, based in Tremor County Waterford, who spotted her beautiful lines and her beautiful uh, weatherhead and uh, bucky built boat from Port Seaton and he converted her to a catch and later converted her and licensed her for sail training. So unusually this boat is licensed by in both the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland to carry 12 passengers who are engaged in sail training and what we do is we take young people to sea for a week and we focus on their personal development on behalf of Sail Training Ireland. And Sail Training Ireland it's an all-Ireland um, organisation uh, we take young people and older people on sail training, which is not really about just learning to sail, it's about personal development, learning resilience, teamwork, uh, group work, all that sort of thing. Um, this, week's trips are, this week's trip and last week's trip are sponsored by Draha de Port, um, and this is our second trip. We're going to end up on Friday with an award ceremony for the young trainees, um, but we also do over 18 trips as well. So if any, any of the parents there are interested, uh, keep an eye on the Facebook group, um, Sail Train Ireland for Youth Development and uh, just follow the Brian Brew and they usually have links. Okay, and it's a week of hard work. It's not all a holiday, so they're scrubbing the deck behind me. They, we had freshly baked bread this morning. And with the catch rig, it's designed for lots of labor. So there's no winches, no electrics or electronics on board. So the mainsail itself weighs a ton and the trainees themselves haul that up. So if we don't see you on board, we'll see you in port somewhere. I'm on the bowsprit of Brian Baru with two of the trainees. I'm Beth and I'm from County Mead. I'm Rohan and I'm from County Mead as well. So Beth, tell me, how did you end up on the bow of a sail training vessel? Uh, my mum wanted me to learn how to sail during the summer, so we went on the Brian Baru. And what were you hoping to achieve out of the week? Uh, I wanted to learn how to like be on a boat and like learn about all the different ropes and sails and stuff, and learn how to like be with other people in like small spaces. So what do you find the most difficult thing to do on board during your week? Um, probably the sleeping arrangements because there's like there's nine of us in a tiny room and it's way too hot and everyone's too loud and you can't really sleep until like everyone's gone to sleep so it's very difficult. So there's a bit of negotiation involved isn't there? Yeah we all have to compromise when we want to go to bed. Okay, so it's about learning about compromise, really. Yeah. So if I was to ask you in six weeks' time, or a friend asked you in six weeks' time, describe your experience in five words. Um, it was very fun and hard. Hard. Okay. Hard. Thank you, Beth. So, Rowan, why yeah. did you end up on the bowsprit of the Brian Baru? Um, my parents thought it would be a good experience uh, to go off on a week sailing uh, around the east coast so and has been yeah. So who does all the cooking and cleaning and maintaining the boat? Um, we do yeah we take it in turns every day two people uh, have to do the cooking and cleaning and then the rest um, help out on uh, the rest of the boat. Okay. And what's your favourite bit on board? Um, I like steering and then just hanging out really and swimming. We go for swims so. Yeah, lots yeah. of swimming, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. And what are you hoping to say uh, when we're coming into draw at the end of the week and your parents say, How did you get on? What what, what would you like to be saying to them? Um it was fun, it was a learning experience and um I'd like to do it again. Really. Okay. Yeah. Great. Was it hard work? Um sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. Pays off. Okay, thank you, Beth, and thank you, Rowan. Last week, uh, I had the privilege of being aboard uh, my father's uh, fishing boat, the Investor M. 
going back to uh, the 50s, my father bought uh, a boat by the name of the Investor from a company in uh, Girvan. That was about the, the start of my father's uh, uh, fishing seriously. He had had boats before that there, but uh, it was an on and off, and there wasn't a lot of, there was very little money to be made at the fishing at that particular time in the 50s. And uh, it was just uh, a scrape. But my father bought this boat from uh, the McCrinnells of uh, Girvan. She was a weatherhead uh, built boat. And uh, she was called the Investor. We kept her for uh, about uh, eight years, up to uh, 1960. And um, she was getting, you know, she'd, she'd almost passed her day uh, as far as fishing was concerned. So Alan and I were taking a, a better interest in the fishing then. And uh, we thought about building a boat, getting a boat built. But uh, the problem was with nearly everybody at that particular time. Where does the money and where does the deposit come from? So that was the main uh, uh, hurdle or obstacle. But uh, with selling the, the first investor, we bought a, a boat in between the call of the Wilshire a wee noble belt boat, our Miller belt boat, a fine wee boat she was, she was only seven years old. But my father liked the weatherhead boats, the, he liked the, the, the build. Uh, so we sold that boat, but it was on and off, could we afford to build a boat? No, no, I don't think we could. And, uh, well, I think my mate, and that's, that's the way it went on for weeks and months. We've got in contact with uh, uh, Mr. Weatherhead, oh, um, Port Seton, East, East Lothian, Scotland. And uh, we uh, gave him uh, details of the type of the boat that we wanted. And uh, in fact, uh, my brother and I and my father, we sat down and drew a sketch of uh, the boat and we wanted a lot of beam and that was for carrying herring. So we sent the, 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 the plans across to Weatherhead and he, he, he said, yes, no problem. He says I could build a boat uh, off those lines. and. Um, we went across uh, when the keel was laid and uh, it was a momentous occasion. It was, uh, there was joy mixed with, with tears and this is a very, very big undertaking. And if it doesn't work out, well, uh, <laughs> we don't know what the, the end will be, but we, uh, we decided on it on a price anyway, which was enormous. It was twelve thousand six hundred pounds, and um, oh, that was um, like uh, the man stepping on the moon. One great step for man. <laughs> but. Uh, we went across and a couple of times and watched the boat uh, being built, different stages, to finally Mr. Weatherhead phoned us and he said, uh, the boat's almost ready. We're going to uh, launch shortly and uh, we'd like you all up there and we'll do the ceremony, launch the, launch the boat. And we, the mum and a lot of the family went across and 
it was a wonderful occasion. Like it was, it was something like beyond our imagination at that particular time. But looking back now, God's hand was in it, and I, I believe that with all my heart. Like we took, we took that chance, but at the same time we had faith that God would uh, would look after us and and provide. And which he did more than we uh, we can understand or appreciate. We, uh, she was launched on Easter morn Monday, um, 1961. And uh, it was a wonderful occasion. It was a lovely day. The weather was uh, fine. There, there was no wind whatsoever. And uh, it wasn't as slip as what we would uh, normally use here with wheels on it, but it was just loans and uh, Tala put on the, 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 the loans and they pulled the, the, the wedges away and away she went. There was no ropes, no wires or anything attached to the boat. She just, and you, as soon as she went into the water, you pressed the button and started the engine and that was really it. And come across, come across alongside the quay. Uh, they had about a week or a fortnight's uh, fitting to do before the boat was uh, finally handed over and we instead of coming up around uh, Cape Wrath the north of Scotland we came through the uh, Forth and Clyde Canal and I believe that was about the last of the fishing boats to come through that there because the locks were in a bad state and we had to drive the boat through some of the locks to to get through and we come out at uh, uh, Port Glasgow and uh, come down uh, through the, the, the Cumbries and past the, uh, the, the Elsa Craig and round the uh, Corsal Point and heading for home on a Saturday evening and uh, my father was a very conscientious person as far as uh, uh, being out on a Sunday on a fishing boat and uh, we we'll just get into Port of Oge at 5 to 12. And when we got in, there was a massive crowd waiting on this new fishing boat. And that, that was really it. But the father, all his life, he, it was a hard life for him. His mum and dad died when he was two years old. And they, uh, it was tough. Tough for all the family, tough for everybody. And up until that uh, point, there was, it was just hand to mouth, no uh, reserve whatsoever. It was just uh, make do of what you could, uh, what you could get. And uh, with the benevolence of good neighbours, good, lovely neighbours, what they could share, and that was really it. But that, that the, the, the first investor was really the, the start of uh, my father making, you know, a go of uh, the fishing and a go of life, really. But he trusted the Lord and every, everything. He left it in the Lord's hands completely. He... Um, I served my t uh, part of my time at the fishing and um, then I left it and come with my father and the first investor, then uh, the second investor and we had tough enough times. Uh, there were slack periods uh, during the years but uh, you would have got a booster with the, the hern fishing on the scene netting. And that's when uh, you made your money, uh, but you were very careful with what you did make. You, you didn't make it, you know, you didn't go on a spend spree whenever uh, money was sort of uh, uh, flowing into the house or into the purse. You just uh, left it by for a rainy day, and that was the way that, that was the fishing. But at the same time, the, the, the fishing improved dramatically from the 60s right up to the 2000 and uh, 
times were very, very good. I personally uh, could not complain. I'm not rich by any means, but at the same time, I can see the, the Lord's hand in it and everything. And I praise him for that there. And uh, the getting of the building of the, the, second, the second investor was the start of uh, it all. And her coming into Port of Ogie last week there just brought back all those memories that lay stagnant, that lay dormant in my mind. But when I seen her, it was an emotional time. 62 years since we got our belt. And um, all those uh, happy plus sad occasions all flooded back. But I'll finish with this here. I thank the Lord for the way that he has preserved us along the pathway of life. I believe that it was his, uh, God's hand and given us that wee boat. We've got a living out of it, but at the same time, uh, there was the giving up, uh, giving up the percentage back again. Now, I'm not going to say what way the money went, but there was that giving back again, things that others needed. You, you felt that uh, there was a need to give, and that was really what it was all about. The fishing is an uncertain, unpredictable job, but at the same time, I wouldn't change. Uh, I would. Uh, there may be things that you would change, but at the same time, I appreciate very much uh, the privilege of being at the fishing and being called a fisherman, enjoying it, its hardships, the times when there was plenty, all just made life what it is. And that's really, that's really what it, uh, it's all about. And uh, I'm so thankful to the Lord for the way that they provided and preserved us along the pathway of life. <laughs>